Jalair here with Starfish, and I am going to teach you all today how to make a flour-based clay. We are going to use four cups of flour, one cup of salt, just regular table salt will do, one and a half cups of water, and something called alum. Alum is in the spice uh, aisle, but if you don't have alum, you can substitute it with cream of tartar. So we're gonna take these ingredients and mix them together. We take our four cups of flour, our one cup of salt, and we're just going to pour it in right here. Usually if I'm cooking, I put my hair up, as a safety precaution, but since it's for clay, we don't need to do that. We need one teaspoon of alum or cream of tartar if you don't have alum, which not everybody has. We're gonna put that in there. And we're gonna take and mix in our water. Now I like mixing it in kind of slow. We're gonna mix it into a dough. Take it. I'm short as you can see, so I'm gonna hide something eyes, but we want to mix it thoroughly into a dough. So we're gonna stir that up. Let's make it a little bit hard here. Mix that down. Now as you can see in here, it's still a little powdery, so I'm gonna just take my hand start mixing it really, really well together. Now what the alum does, or the cream of tartar, is it really helps bind all of this together. It's a, a kind of binding ink that you can put in ingredients to really make it stick hard together. has like a play-doh consistency here. Nice and mixed. Okay. Gives you a little bit of a workout too. So how's everybody doing out there surviving the Quarantine. Hopefully this will give you some ideas on how to create and get creative in your spare time with your kids, with other family members. What these make are those cute little dough-looking ornaments that people do on Christmas trees. And you can paint them. And then there's various ways that we can finish them, which we'll go into later. Okay, it's getting really good. You can see. At this point, you can make it into little balls and add food coloring to it. I'll do one little food coloring so you can see, just any old food coloring. I'll use green. So we're gonna put green right in here. Just gonna put a drop in the middle. See how that green is? And we're gonna mix it in. This is how if you just want to pre-color some, you can. Okay, so we'll put in, show you how it's gonna turn green here in a minute, hopefully. And we need a little bit more green. You can see some of the green coming out, but I think it needs a little bit more. Another drop or two. Doesn't take much. And I don't want to end up with green hands. Okay. Switch. You can see how if you add food color at this stage, you can get some really cool either marbling effect if you don't mix it all the way through or just keep on mixing it. And again, of course, the more green you add, the more intense it's going to be. The more green food coloring. Okay, you can see that, how that's green. That's 
one color the rest I'm going to get some of this flower down here at the bottom in here put that in okay so you have your base here right here it's a nice get it nice and kneaded and soft okay get your nice ball what you want to do is take a little flower, just sprinkle a little flower down on your surface that you're going to roll it out. Now, if you're going to make your own shapes with it, it can be anywhere between one quarter of an inch to one half inch thick. If you're going to use a cookie quarter, cookie cutter, I recommend making it about one quarter inch thick. So you can roll that out here. And I happen to have a star cookie cutter. So I'm gonna just press that down, just like you would normal cookies. Okay. And then we're gonna take that off. Just push it around the edges here. And I'm going to kind of make sure that it's nice and evenly spaced, kind of sharpen it up. You can get a knife if you wish to. Now the next step is really important because if you want to hang it, you have to put your device in before it cooks. So I am just taking a paper clip. So I am going to take this paper clip, kind of straighten it out, and then I'm going to pierce it right through my dough. So now I have a hanging device on it. Now a couple other things you can do if you have old jewelry, like this is an old pair of earrings, you can also add to them at this time. So I'm just going to take my pliers, trimmers, clip off the back of the earring, and then we can stick it right into the dough too. So you want to kind of get it in there so it's nice and really cool looking. And then that will be cooked like that. Cute, huh? So I'm now going to show you how to make a bunny rabbit for Easter. So I'm going to do a ball. <laughs> Sorry about that. We're going to do a nice round ball and then one a little bit smaller ball. My dog is cozy. We have a bigger one and a smaller one. And we're going to flatten those out together. We're going to meld them together. Okay. Almost the same as if you'd be doing a snowman. Roll them together here. And then I'm going to be taking two equal shapes and making them into long tubes for the ears. Gonna do a rabbit ear here. And another little rabbit ear here. You just shape them from tubes and then shape them into the cute little rabbit ears that you want. And then we need the little paws, or at least a bunny tail. So we can I'm gonna do four little round balls for the paws. And two more. There's another one. Sorry, my husband's being awfully loud in the background. Oh, that's a little too big. We're going to make that a little bit smaller. So there's our cute little bunny rabbit. I'm going to flatten them out. And then we're going to put our little device in to hang it. Just a paper clip. Now you don't have to hang yours, but I think it would look awfully cute to have some of these hanging. So I'm just going to put my little paper clip in there. And we'll get our spatula to pick this one up because it's a little bit bigger. Cute little bunny rabbit. Oh, we lost a paw. 
little paw there. Whoops. I'm gonna pinch that in there so it sticks a little bit better. There we go. Cute little bunny rabbit. I'm placing these on a cookie sheet, just FYI. I'll show you here. So this one is gonna be a little cheat, a chick, a little peep. Yeah, so I want a ball about that size and one a little bit smaller. So you have your two balls. And you wanna try and get as many of the crinkles out of it as you can. So it's really shaped without those cracks and crinkles. Again, I'm using a floured surface and I'm just pressing these together like so. They come together. I need a beak. So I'm rolling. Make it smaller about this size. I'm going to take it and shape it into a beak. Right there. And a little tail feather. We need a wing. And remember, you can keep it as long as it's under half an inch. You can add to the top of it with your wing. So I'm going to shape this into a little wing. Press that down in there so it sticks really good. And we have our cute little chick. Okay, this one is going to be a flower. So again, you're going to start with the ball of your, for your base. Of your ball. And then several smaller balls around it, shaped like petals. So we're going to flatten this one first, just again. Remember that rule, quarter to half an inch. And we're just gonna shape same size balls as petals around it. Yeah. Big, pretty flower. Or do you want to hang it from your window or from the front door so you can give it to someone? Or if you have skewers, I'll show you what you can do with skewers too. Let's see what I have. A flower going on here. One more little grass petal. Okay, I have these barbecue skewers and I'm just gonna use this because we only cook this at 250 degrees. So we really don't have to worry about it getting, catching on fire. Now, some of this dough you can save for later. You don't have to cook it all up at one time. So I'm gonna put the rest of my dough in a Ziploc baggie for later. And we'll just save it. There we go. You don't wanna have all the fun at one time, right? Put that all in there and that. We'll just go. You can even need a little bit more to make it a little bit more thinner. We'll put this aside. Okay, I'm going to bring over the cookie sheet so you can see what we've done. Now, this is not my good cookie sheet. You can see that. It's an old, icky cookie sheet. You don't have to use a good cookie sheet when you're doing these plates. Okay? This is going into the oven 250 for 30 minutes. And then I'm going to turn it over again. All of these will get flipped over. So you can see how cute some of these are going to look with the little designs. Okay. I might even, oh, I have this cute little thing. I think that needs to go right there in her. Okay. Cute. 
These are going to be beads that you can do. I just skewer them through the paper clip. Okay? So you can see this here. And I, okay, so at 250 for 30 minutes, turn it over and bake it for an additional 90 minutes. So here we go. Okay, so while this is cooking, I'm gonna give you a couple of tips on this. My, my hair's like frizzy today. Um, you can add powdered Kool-Aid that is unsweetened to this cookie dough. Not only will it color it, like if you do a fruit punch, but it'll also make your ornaments smell good. So think of that. You can add essential oils if you want. You can even add um, different kinds of glitter into it before you cook it. So just think of, about ways you can get really, really creative. Okay, so they're done now. I'll show you here. These are really, really hard. Okay, we're gonna let them cool. Remember again, I took them at 250 for 30 minutes, flipped them to the other side, and cooked them for another 90 minutes. So we have them nice and hard. I'm gonna let these cool for a little bit. Okay, so we've cooked our uh, dough, our clay dough for 30 minutes at 250, flipped it, and then cooked it another 90 minutes. It is all finished. We let it cool down, and now you can go ahead and paint your item. Here's a flower, the flower I painted. You can use acrylic paint oil-based paint. You can even use fingernail polish to do this. So know that you can use a lot of things to paint. Once you have it all painted here, I used a glitter paint on this one. You can paint both sides too. I just didn't do it for this. If you want a smooth surface, you can even sand it down. Start with a fine grid and go to an ultra fine grid, a paper like 400 or plus to get um, some really cool, I'll show this close up here. See how it's all glittery? You can hang that. Here's another star I did with that glitter paint. You can see that. Here's a cute little duck. Quack, quack. And now I'm working on the bunny rabbit that we did. So these are all painted, and like I said, you can even use fingernail polish to paint. I did on um, the flower some fingernail polish. Now you want to finish it with a glaze. So the glaze you can use, you can use shellac, you can use spar urethane or any urethane, but today I'm going to use a clear fingernail polish. So all you have to do is coat your item, make sure you use it on a protective surface anytime you paint. So I'll show it down here. Okay, so here we're going to coat just with the clear fingernail polish. And that'll give it a nice shine in addition to sealing your paint in. So these should be all items that you have at your house. And then we'll come in here, give it a nice coat all over with clear fingernail polish. Doesn't matter what brand, I think this is a Sally Beauty Supply brand that I'm using. You can tell I don't do my nails, so I can adjust. You do want to make sure your paint is completely dry before you use this. And we have a cute little Easter bunny that you can either hang on an edge of a basket, hang from trees, put in different areas. So thank you for joining me. Next week I will have another video of art that you can do with everyday objects at home. Hope you enjoyed this. And if you have any questions, go to www starfishproject21.org and you can see ways you can help in this time of crisis or get creative art projects for you to do at home. Take care everybody.